kids and adults can have different mindsets about their basic talents and abilities. Hello and welcome to Lady Wisdom Speaks Academy. My name is Dr. Katherine Constant and I am the author of the book Lady Wisdom Speaks. Lady Wisdom Speaks. Well I'm here with you today because I want to continue our conversation on mindset. Having a wealth mindset versus a poverty mindset. Mindset, the new psychology of success by Carol S. Dweck, PhD. How do we make sure then that kids and adults remain eager to learn? In a fixed mindset, children think their talents, abilities, intelligence are just fixed. They have a certain amount and that's that. As you will see, this is the mindset that saps children's motivation to learn and adults' motivation to engage as well. But other, other kids have a growth mindset. They don't think it's fixed. They think their abilities can be developed through practice, dedication, um, help and good mentoring from others. They don't think everyone's the same or that anyone can be Einstein, but they think everyone can get smarter if they apply themselves. And these are the people who remain vehemently, vigorously engaged with learning especially in the face of difficulty. And I actually read this book uh, a couple of years back, actually, when I was a principal in the uh, Boston Public Schools. Um, they uh, had actually Dr. Carol Dweck to come and speak with us on mindset. And I found what she had to share with us to be very important because we can change our thinking. How we think about life can be changed. We could either have what she calls a growth mindset or a fixed mindset. Now, the growth mindset is one in which you are still learning. Your mind is opening to opened to learning and to changes. And even if you fail at something, that, that doesn't mean that that's the end of it. No, that's actually a way of learning. You can learn from your failures. And we find that people who are successful, that they tend to have a growth mindset. Now the opposite of that is a fixed mindset. That is someone who thinks that intelligence is something that you're born with and that you could never become smarter. That if you fail, that that's a sign against your intelligence, that you are not smart. But um, that person doesn't ever move forward and actually becomes stagnant and doesn't grow because they're not willing to challenge themselves. And in her book, she talks about challenging yourself, that when you challenge yourself, it actually causes the neurons in your mind, your, your brain, excuse me, your brain to expand, to grow. And it reminds me about the physical, that when somebody works out, you know, if you want to gain muscles, that you have to put stress on your muscles, that you have to actually do resistant training. And it's the same thing with your brain. When you're learning a new skill, you have to push past the barriers of poverty, of, of, of thinking that you cannot do it and have a positive mindset and know a growth mindset and know that you can learn something new, that you may not have it perfect yet. And I like that. She, cause she speaks about that. She says, when you tell someone you know, it's okay that you didn't master it the first time, but keep working at it. As you keep going forward, as you keep working at it, that you'll get better. That yes, you may not have it yet, but that doesn't mean that you will never get it. And therefore you can pursue it and, uh, and gain it. Mindset. The new psychology of success 
How we can learn to fulfill our potential by Professor Carol Dweck, leading researcher in the field of motivation. With the right mindset, we can achieve our goals, personal and professional. Mindset, a growth mindset or a fixed mindset. The intelligent woman is always open to new ideas. In fact, she looks for them. Proverbs 18.15 Mindset. Lady Wisdom Speaks. Mindset. Success. So I'm going to take you through a bunch of pressure cooker situations and see who remains engaged and who doesn't. And in my view, therefore, who remains happy and who doesn't. So let's go. In one study, we followed hundreds of seventh graders through their transition. Seventh grade in the US, they're about 13 years of age. It's a terrible transition for many students. Everything gets harder, the grading gets more stringent, the environment becomes less personal. And that's when we see students turning off to school. So we measured students' mindsets at the beginning of seventh grade. We saw who believed their intelligence was just fixed versus who believed it could be developed. And look what we found. Although the two groups entered seventh grade with identical past achievement in math, their grades diverged steadily over the next two years. Those with a growth mindset remained and became increasingly engaged, while those with a fixed mindset became increasingly disengaged. Then we decided to look at the pressure cooker of all academic situations. We decided to study pre-med students at an elite university on the east coast of the US. There is no curriculum that's more intense. Moreover, students have lived their lives for this moment to gain entrance into a pre-medical curriculum. Their parents have lived their lives for this moment. And yet, those with a growth mindset said they cared more about learning than they did about grades. They remained, moreover, engaged in vigorous learning, even when things didn't go well for them initially. And look what happened. As a result of their vigorous engagement in the learning process, in the face of remaining engaged when the going got rough, they actually ended up with significantly higher final grades than those with the fixed mindset who were always worried about how smart they were. They, as a group, did not recover from poor initial performance. They worried about whether it meant they were smart or dumb, but they didn't get back in there and engage vigorously. And I shared with you in the past the book, Seeds for Covenant Wealth. Daily Decrees That Bring Dominion by Dr. Sharon R. Nesbitt. And in it, she talked about our thinking, that the one thing we're gonna to need to do to be able to obtain a positive mindset, that wealth mindset, is that we're going to have to change our thinking. And we know that Proverbs says that, as a man thinks, so is he. And if you didn't see this video, then go back to my YouTube channel and on it you will see this um, video that I did on Seeds for Covenant Wealth. And you can learn a little bit more about the topic, about wealth, um, having a wealth mindset.
Well, this is looking at it in the spiritual sense, you know, thinking about the spirit of the man and how we change and how we think. And we're all connected, body, mind, soul, and spirit. Well, I discovered this book, Mindset, The New Psychology of Success, How We Can Learn to Fulfill Our Potential by Carol S. Dweck, Ph.D. I want to show you how this vigorous engagement works in the brain. In this study, students' brains were monitored as they worked on a task, made mistakes, and uh, they saw what as they worked on a task and made mistakes. Now, what we see here are the growth mindset brains. When they made mistakes, they detected them they processed them, and they cor corrected them. So they remained engaged and curious and effective. But on the left, the fixed mindset brains, they show almost no sign of engaging with the errors. They are running from the errors as fast as possible. That is not a recipe for effective engagement or achievement. And it's the same thing in our spiritual growth, that as we pursue God, as we learn God, as we continue to um, find out more about Him, then our faith grows. Hallelujah. Our faith grows and our skills grow and we have more joy, we have more of everything, but it's a process. And I was so happy to actually come across this book again in my library because it says mindset the new psychology of success and it's a psychology so you know when you think of it body when you, when you work out mind hallelujah that's the psychology of success by thinking by having that positive thinking hallelujah and then spirit by believing by having faith how are these mindsets learned? The most interesting way we've studied them is in the context of praise. It, we've done experiments with little kids ranging to older kids. And in, in these experiments, children perform on a task and some of them are praised for their ability. You are really smart. Some of them after they've performed, are praised for the process they've engaged in, their strategies, their effort, their focus, their persistence. So here's an example of effort. You worked really hard. What we have found in study after study is that ability praise backfires. The self-esteem movement told us ability praise would make kids happy, and it does for a minute. But as soon as they encounter difficulty, that happiness fades away. So ability praise, we found, puts them into a fixed mindset, and as soon as the task becomes difficult, they start being unhappy, disengaging and becoming less and less effective in their problem solving. But those who receive process praise, again, strategies, effort, perseverance, they go into more of a growth mindset and their engagement becomes more and more vigorous as the problems get harder their problem solving becomes more and more effective as the problems get harder. That we can actually grow into what God has called us to be. That this is not it. You don't have to um, feel that you are not where you, you are. You can change. Hallelujah. You can change. You can make a difference in your life by changing your thinking,
by having that positive mindset, by what Dr. Um, Matthew Stevenson says, breaking the barrier of the mind. Hallelujah. And research proves it, that it can happen, that you can break the barrier of the mind. And you can grow and have a positive mindset. And she writes here that it's for parenting, for business, for school, for relationships. Hallelujah. And yes, so I wanted to actually also bring to your attention the book Abba by Dr. Matthew Stevenson. And we have, through our Father God, the ability, he's given us the ability to grow, hallelujah, to have a positive mindset. And we know through our identity from Abba that we are children of God. And that means that there is no limit to our growing because Father God, he is a creator. He is one who, um, who takes our failures. He looks at us. He looks beyond our faults and he sees our need. Hallelujah. He thinks that we're valuable. He thinks we're a great investment. And Abba Father, he's the one who gives us that, that desire to move forward. Lady Wisdom Speaks. Are you willing to learn? To learn, you must want to be taught. Lady Wisdom asks, do you want to understand? Learning is a process. To learn, you must want to be instructed. Learning cannot happen if you refuse to accept it. Lady Wisdom Speaks Academy. Learning is active. What are you doing to understand the instruction? Strategies to help you learn what God is teaching. Biblical meditation, dream interpretation, prayer and fasting, biblical journaling. Lady Wisdom Speaks. Are you willing to learn? Isn't that wonderful? I am so excited about this because I know that we can move forward and I know that Lady Wisdom will help us. That is why the Lord has provided for us the book of Proverbs. And in Proverbs, it is the manual for living. And my book, Lady Wisdom Speaks, which you can also get, um, is based on um, having a positive mindset, having a growth mindset. Lady Wisdom tells us how to be successful, how to gain wealth. And even in this book, my book, but also in the book of Proverbs, it says that the intelligent woman the intelligent woman is willing to try new ideas, to try new things. Hallelujah. And that a wise person is willing to take rebuke. A wise person is willing to take correction. A wise person is willing to learn from their mistakes. And that's what wisdom is all about, is learning from your experiences and then applying your experiences to your everyday life and to your success. So I hope you like this video and follow me in the process. And just to recap, that the books that we've been looking at is Seeds for Covenant Wealth by Dr. Sharon R. Nesbitt. We've been looking at ABBA. Go back and look at those videos. ABBA by Dr. Matthew Stevenson. And then um, Mindset Now by Dr. Carol S. Dweck. And then, of course, my book, <laughs> Lady Wisdom Speaks by Dr. Catherine Constant. Decrees. Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. God created the world out of nothing with the decree. We have been given the authority to decree and see it manifested in our lives. Daily Decrees for a Wealthy Mindset I decree 
that I have a wealth mindset like Father God. I decree that I am redeemed from the curse of the law. Create your own personal decrees and see them manifest in your life. Amen. And we're all saying the same thing. We're all saying that you can have the best life possible if you apply wisdom to your life and if you allow God to be, hallelujah, number one in your life. The, the wisdom is the principal thing. But before you uh, do anything, reverence and fear God. Put God first in your life. And if you do that, all of the wisdom, all of the success, everything that you're looking for will come to you if you put God first in your life. Well, Lady Wisdom says that you are wonderful. You're beautiful. You're God's gift to the world. So go on out there and shine and let the world know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Um, I want us to grow. Remember that the title of this is Lady Wisdom Speaks Academy. And learning is a good thing. We want to increase our intellectual knowledge. Hallelujah. We want to gain and, and become more smarter. That's what Dr. Dweck is saying in mindset, that we can become smarter as we continue to learn it. That's what the book of Proverbs tells us, that we can be learners. And if we continue to learn as we go along, that we will get smarter and smarter. A word of encouragement. Anxious hearts are very heavy, but a word of encouragement does wonders. Proverbs 12, 25. Words are powerful. Our words can uplift or destroy a person's confidence. Some people like to make cutter remarks, but the words of the wise soothe and heal. Proverbs 12, 18. Bless others with a positive word. Be kind, be loving, be compassionate. A word of encouragement. I love you. Be blessed. Um, this morning I am going apple picking with my daughter Karen and with um, her friend and my girlfriend and her son and we're gonna have a really good time so come with me as we go apple picking orchards, the apple orchards. I'm really excited about going and seeing the apple orchards because I'm putting together my own apple orchard. So come with me as we go to the apple orchard farm.
at the orchard and looking at the herbs, the different butters and things that they have here. And it's, it's really interesting. This is where they have the piers. Yeah, so it's fun. We made it. We had a really good discussion in the car, but um, we're going to have a, a great time getting apples. Okay, so I got my map and I got my bag and here we are walking, here we are walking in the orchard and there's so much to see and to do. So we're heading down, so we're heading down to the Empire Apples and the Gala Apples. <laughs> oh, say cheese, look at the camera, wait it. Oh, there you go. Oh, you can reach it. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> My first apple. Yeah. yeah. Woohoo! Here's another one. Terence is there, Cortland apples. These are empire apples. These aren't empire. This has a little bruise I'm on it. I'm surprised that you say, oh crap, she just yes. dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to eat this apple. Look at that. I polished it here and I'm going to bite into it. Delicious! Oh my goodness! This is fantastic! Fresh from the trees. Mm. These aren't even Empire, these are Portland. Empire is way better. Okay, okay so we're going to go get some different varieties, but this one is delicious so far. Baby's up in that apple tree. Oh, I can't even get this. Look at oh, Glam Fun up in the tree. I didn't Wait, get what, what was it? Glam fun. Oh, glam fun. Look at that. I polished it here and I'm going to bite into it. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is fantastic. Fresh from the tree. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna go get some different varieties, but this one is delicious so far. Oh, say cheese, look at the camera, wait it. Oh, there you go. Oh, you can reach it.
the pumpkin patch. We've had a great day picking apples and just having a lot of fun. Here we are in the pumpkin patch and we just finished picking apples and we just wanted to get a, a picture with the pumpkin. And there are many varieties, very many sizes I should say. And it's been a wonderful afternoon. Fresh apple blueberry almond tart. Fresh, ma freshly made with the apples from the apple orchard. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> this is my first tart, so we'll see how it tastes. But it smells delicious, so it's got to taste good. I think it will taste good with some ice cream on top. Mmm, yum, yum, yum. Here are the basic ingredients used to uh, bake and make the tart. The main ingredients, of course, were the apples. And the apples, I was able to get the apples from the apple orchard. So So if you missed my video on my visit to the apple orchard, go back and watch that. Yes, it was a lot of fun, quite hilarious. And I had a great time with Glam Fun, my daughter, and some of my friends. So go and check that video out about our trip to the apple orchard. So that's actually what this gave me the idea to create this apple tart, at least to try it out. The next ingredient that I used was these blueberry juice infused cranberries, dried cranberries that were infused with blueberry juice. And then for the topping, I used almonds, butter, sugar, and cinnamon. And combine that together with a little flour to create a, a, a crumble, a, to, a topping to put on top of the tart. And finally, I purchased the pie crust from the store. And I just used one of the rolls. This says two pie crusts. I just used one of them. Just unfold, filled, and bake. It was that easy. But I like the ingredients here because I know that it's fresh. Almonds are great for you. So is cinnamon. The apples are definitely fresh. The butter. This is some really good butter. And I got that butter from um, Costco. Cranberries are really good for you as well. With the blueberry juice, is is great. So it's a, a nutritious dessert and it tasted delicious yes so basically what I did was I um, cut up the apples I sliced them into slithers slices and then I placed it on the pie crust in a circular fashion and I then sprinkled some sugar on it along with the cinnamon and then I added the cranberries on top and then on top of that I put this mixture and then baked it in the oven until it looked until the you know it looked um, baked at probably about 35 minutes or so and um, then pulled it out and let it cool and sliced it and ate it. I know that it will taste good with ice cream. Next time I make it, I'm going to make sure that I have some ice cream, vanilla ice cream to put on top. 
apple and blueberry almond tart. Hello and welcome to Lady Wisdom Speaks Academy. I am participating in a fall dessert collab with Mimi and Harmony. Now I went apple picking a couple of months ago and the delicious apples are still in my fridge and I needed to do something special with them. So um, I'm thinking of baking an apple pie for you as part of this fall dessert collab. I made an apple crumble and it came out pretty good. So now I'm going to try this apple pie. If you want to be a part of this fall dessert collaboration, then listen to the information and um, come on and upload your video too. Hello and welcome to Lady Wisdom Speaks Academy. My name is Catherine Constant and I have an open invitation for you. Yeah, that's right, you. I want you to be a part of our Fall Desserts Collab. This is Mimi here and I am so excited to invite all of you to this open collaboration of our favorite fall desserts or treats. Now, I'll be co-hosting this with Harmony. She is the wife of YouTuber Man is 777 and then also Catherine from Lady Wisdom Speaks Academy. I am so excited to be collaborating with Harmony Mimi on this fall collab. I have been looking at my different cookbooks the Taste of Home Baking Book and My Essentials of Baking. And I have been actually trying my hand in baking. And so I want you to come and share with us your tasty treats for the season. Everyone is welcome. So I'm hoping that everyone Yes, everyone is welcome. So pull out your recipe books. Hallelujah. Your favorite recipe. She said that you could have a new dessert too, and I agree. I can't wait to see all of your creations. Number four, upload your video on Saturday, November 10th at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time or later. So guys, please do upload your video on Saturday, November 10th at 7 a.m. November 10th is the day to upload. Woo. We are co-hosting this. Come together as a beautiful community sharing our baking skills and talents. Now you know I know <laughs> I am not a baker. This is a great time to learn and to try something new, try something different. So that's why I'm going to go to the experts. This is my book, Essentials of Baking and start finding out exactly what I need to do to make some really great desserts. Please see the open invite collab details below. I hope everyone will be able to participate. See you soon. God bless. Everyone is welcome to participate. Create a video sharing your favorite or even a new fall dessert or treat made by you. Include in your description box the playlist link. Please upload your video on Saturday, November 10, 2018 at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time or later. Have tons of fun. Thank you so much and have a great time baking.
All right, I'm going to get started on this apple pie, and hopefully I'll have it all finished and ready for you by the end of the day, and you'll see it real soon. So stay tuned. I love hot apple pie with a little dab of ice cream, and see the ice cream melt down. Yeah, so that's exactly what we're going to do when we finish. Are you game for this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're going to try and put this together. Mm -hmm. Come on and work with me. All right. Here we go. Hello and welcome to Lady Wisdom Speaks Academy. Uh, my name is Katherine Constant and I'm participating in a fall dessert collab with Mimi and Harmony and anyone else who wishes to be a part of it. Well, as I was thinking about, well, what am I going to bake? Because I'm really not a baker. But I do like to try out new things and I do like to try out different recipes. And that's why I actually purchased these um, cookbooks because I thought, well, one of these days I might just decide to bake something. So this challenge has come just at the right time when I'm in the mood to bake. And as I was looking at these pies and these different um, desserts, for fall, fall celebration, pleasing Thanksgiving pies, I remembered that my brother bought me a beautiful stoneware pie plate. With some apples that I got from apple picking at the apple orchard with my daughter last month. So, I'm going to put together an apple pie. I received this a beautiful pie plate from my brother about 12 years ago and I never used it. I had it tucked away in the cabinet and because of this wonderful fall dessert collaboration I decided well let me pull this out and give it a try. Plus I went apple picking with my daughter and some of her friends and you could see that video um, and I'll leave a link in the description below and we picked this beautiful assortment of apples so now I have a lot of apples left back from apple picking This would be a great opportunity to use these apples to create um, this pie. Yes, so I'm excited about that. And this pie plate also came with some instructions on how to make an apple pie. So I looked at the ingredients and it doesn't look too complicated. And it, it seems like something that I can actually do. Um, it's asking for two unbaked nine inch pie shells, which I have here with the pie crust from Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> He's going to help me out with the two pie crusts. So that's already done. Okay, uh, one and one half cups of granulated sugar. Um, these apples are very sweet, but I'm going to add some sugar to it uh, just a little bit. So I don't want it to be too sweet. Then it says one half cup flour. Um, I've made a pie before, but not with flour. I'm not sure about the flour part. One tablespoon of vanilla. I don't have any vanilla, so we're not going to add that. And one half teaspoon of salt. I definitely have the salt. That can work. And uh, two cups of apples. Well, I have the apples, that's for sure. And it said to pared, cored, and sliced. I like the skin of the apple. I'm not sure if I'm going to uh, peel the skins. I'll think about that. And then one fourth cup of butter. Well, I definitely have some really nice butter here. So I think this can be done. Also, oh yes, three fourths teaspoon of cinnamon. Well, I definitely have the cinnamon and I have some lemon too that I'm going to pour just, you know, squeeze a little 
lemon on the apples just so that they can keep their color. Um, so I have all of the basic ingredients and I'm not one to following the, re the recipe to the tea. Um, the baking here is to mix sugar, flour, vanilla and spices in a large bowl. Add apples and stir. Pour mixture into a shell. Lay other pastry on top of mixture and seal. Slit the pastry on top and sprinkle with sugar. Bake at 350, 60 minutes until apples are tender. So we'll go through the process as best we can and we'll show you, I'll try and show you what I'm doing. So I've gathered all of the ingredients together for the apple pie and I've decided to cut and slice up the apples in a bowl so that it could be convenient in distributing them into the pie shell. What I'm going to do to make this process easy, I am going to just pour the apples into the shell here and then sprinkle on the sugar and the um, cinnamon and other things in it and just make it real quick and easy. Now, I know that, the, you know, we could make it more complicated, but I'm trying to find the most easiest way to make this happen. And I know that it's going to work. The apples are now in the pie shell. I just stacked them up and I know that they're gonna melt down and get soft, so I just put a, the whole bunch in. What I've done is put the apples in the dish, then I add some sugar, the cinnamon, and all of the other ingredients, and then I put the um, butter on top, and now I'm gonna put the cover on it. And um, so let's get to the next step. So I've taken out the roll there of the pastry top, and I'm now placing it on top of the apples and um, covering the pie then I'm pinching the edges of the pie and that was easy to crimp it because of the shape of the bowl well I'm finished with putting it together I just added a light sprinkle of sugar on top and so I'm going to put it in the oven at 350 and leave it in there for 60 minutes until the apples are tender and then we're going to sample this apple pie. <laughs> I think it's going to taste really good. With the leftover apples, I decided that I'm just going to make like a little apple crisp. So I'm going to put them, I just put them inside the dish here. I'm going to add some sugar on top and some cinnamon. And then I'm going to use the Simply Granola here, mixture of oats, honey, raisins, and almonds, and just sprinkle it on top. And um, try it out, see how that works out. I think it's gonna taste good, almost like an apple crisp. Well, um, let me put it in with the pie, and I'll have two beautiful desserts to sample. Um, all right, here we go. So I just sprinkled on top a little of the granola mixture and um, I put some butter there too as well. Butter makes everything taste good with some extra cinnamon and I'm going to pop it in the oven with the pie. I'm going to cover it up with some foil so that it, it can really cook and melt in. I believe it's going to taste really good. Well, the pie is complete. I just took it out of the oven and it's sizzling and bubbling from the fruit, the apples. And I'm just gonna let it sit and cool, but it came out really nice. It looks delicious. So we're just gonna let it cool now and then we will sample it.
Well, I'm here with Karen to help me sample the pie to see how it tastes. We both helped ourselves to some, and here's mine. And here's hers. So, Karen, from a scale of one to five, what do you give it? A five. A five? Oh my goodness, she loves my apple pie! <laughs> she gave it a five. This is the best kind of me. Life. Could you say that again? <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't pay her. She said it's the best pie ever. Yeah, it is. That I've ever made. For sure. For I don't sure. Think you've ever made anything in your life. Have you ever made a cake before? Yes, I have. You have? Yes. No. Okay. Well, she says that this is this is a, a, a home run. I made a, a great pie. So, enjoy making your fall tasty treats, too. Have a good day. Thanksgiving prayer of gratitude and praise. Say this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I take this time to remember how much you love me and my family. I want to tell you, thank you, and that I love you. You are wonderful and awesome, Heavenly Father. Thank you for Jesus and what he has done by bringing me into a loving relationship with you. During this time of thanksgiving, help me to be compassionate, to be kind, and to be open-minded towards others. I give my pain and sorrow to you. Let your will for me be done on this earth as it is in heaven. I trust you to meet all of my needs, everything I need in life, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and also concerning my health. Forgive me my sins. I admit my faults. Help me, please. Help me to forgive others, especially my family members and others who have done me wrong. Please guide and guard my heart. Help me to do the right thing. Help me to love. I am depending on your power to deliver me from evil. I praise and thank you for ultimate victory. I say yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. It is so and will not be otherwise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, again, Lady Wisdom says that you're wonderful, you're beautiful, and you're God's gift to the world. So go on out there and shine and let the world know that Jesus Christ is Lord. And see you next time on Lady Wisdom Speaks Academy. Bye! If you desire a born-again experience and relationship with God, then just pray with me. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins, and right now I ask, Jesus, to come and sit on the throne of my heart and to be Lord of my life. Amen. Lady Wisdom Gives a Party and Lady Wisdom Speaks, part of the Lady Wisdom Speaks series. Remember, Lady Wisdom Gives a Party. Hallelujah. And Lady Wisdom Speaks. Amen. Hello and welcome to Lady Wisdom Speaks Academy. My name is Dr. Catherine Constant and I am the author of Lady Wisdom Gives a Party.
a new book in my series of Lady Wisdom Speaks. This is volume two, Lady Wisdom Gives a Party. Come to the party, you're invited to the party. Hallelujah, Lady Wisdom is calling you. Come on out, come to the party with Lady Wisdom. And join me. Remember, Lady Wisdom gives a party. Hallelujah. And Lady Wisdom speaks. Amen.